Thank you for having me to the Red Light District. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm going to set a timer. Uh, it's a union thing. <laughs> so when this is done, I'm leaving. I think. When this alarm goes off, don't talk to me. <laughs> You know what happens? I got an update on my phone. Isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but now there's no stopwatch. So I'm just going to go until you leave. <laughs> right? This is your lucky day. Imagine if you were a plumber, right? He was like, I don't know what time I'm supposed to leave. I'm just going to live here now. <laughs> He'd be like, that's great. A new friend. I just bought a PlayStation. <laughs> I just called you because I broke my toilet. Because I pissed in it. It was like an ornamental toilet. Uh, and I had a sign that said, do not piss. Uh, but I took it down. <laughs> and then I call you, you forgot your clock, and now you live here. <laughs> now we're married. <laughs> would that be nice? <laughs> would that, or would that not be nice? <laughs> I'm not one of those comedians who talks to the audience, but I do want to know. Please do answer. Would that be cool? Yeah. Yes. That'd be lame. <laughs> That'd be the lamest thing I could think of. A plumber moving into your house. You don't even know him. He could be anyone. You know they're not. There's not a list or anything. And who could just say they're a plumber? I went to a... Same thing is true of uh, physios. I, th I think. <laughs> uh, and I went to this guy, uh, he lived in Clontarf. Do you know where that is? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> and do you know where Grafton Street is? Oh, yeah. but, uh, do you or do you not? <laughs> uh, okay, we start at Grafton Street. <laughs> uh, and then they go to the north side of Dublin. I keep going. You go through Marino, you turn left. You keep going. Uh, and then you sort of follow this road along. Uh, and there's a pub called the Yaw. And that's where he lives. That's where the physical is. <laughs> is that too Dublin centric? A bit. It's going to get worse. <laughs> Uh, someone told me to mention Supermax. I don't know what it is. Uh, and I also don't care. But uh, they said, you just say Supermax. And they will rip the seats out of them. They'll just pull the copper out of their walls. And strangle each other. For 15 minutes. But what is this, like a burger? It's like a burger. <laughs> yeah? Is that it? <laughs> it's a burger. <laughs> That's what you guys have here. A burger. That's what I drove here for. <laughs> Just a burger. And fries. Oh, uh, nice. Are they good? Yeah? What's the sauce? Oh, yeah? That's cool. <laughs> um, we have those in Dublin as well. <laughs> uh, there's no real point to the physio story. He's extremely bad. Uh, he used to just rub my legs. <laughs> For hours. And then my dad would collect me. Does anyone here have a dog? <laughs> How old is it? Uh, yeah? yeah? I have a dog and he's 19. <laughs> Legal. 
I was told a dog lived four years, and he's been here for 20. Uh, and he never liked me, and he always pisses in my room. In my room. Uh, and I see him, you know, he's outside. We let him in, he drinks water, and he goes up to my room. And then he's, he's too old to really get into it with, do you know what I mean? When he was 10, when he was 15, he was laying into him. He could take it. <laughs> Not anymore. He got very frail because he couldn't eat. We didn't realize for like a year. And he's just dying uh, faster. Because yeah. once we found, uh, we live on this main road. What's the second main road in <coughs> Limerick? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Is that a joke? <laughs> That's why I'm here. <laughs> That's why I drove here three hours. <laughs> Started at Gravel Street. Got on the M7. But I have, here's the truth. I started the M6 because I assumed Limerick was beside Galway. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> There's counties in between here <laughs> that you've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are from America? What part? Yeah? Do you know where Limerick is? <laughs> you do. You're here. Yeah. We made it. <laughs> Limerick's probably more familiar to you than it is to me. This is strange terrain. You guys talked about themes earlier? What's that? Don't tell me. I'm leaving soon. Do you guys like uh, TV shows? Yeah? What's your favorite show? What? Boston Legal. I love that show. <laughs> that fat old man. He's racist and sexist. <laughs> I just watch that every day. Uh, I liked, back when you were talking about 90s shows. What would be funny if I thought I was the only comedian? And all those other comedians were like audience members. I was like, well, you guys were having that conversation before I started. When you guys were talking about, um, 90 shows? Did you ever watch um, <coughs> Disgusting Jobs with Paris Hilton? <laughs> no? <laughs> that wasn't the name of it, but that was just... <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was just spirit. <laughs> it would be like beautiful Paris Hilton. Do you ever when being blonde was just oil you needed to do. <laughs> uh, this is the most beautiful woman in the world. Uh, and she turned up to a farm and a cow would shit on it. <laughs> uh, this is gross, I hate this. She'd be going to the barn like, you do this all day. A cow, you just sit underneath the cow and it shits on your head. <laughs> and you make money out of that? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> But you don't have to watch that show to be familiar with what I'm about to do. I'm going to read you the idea for a show that I wrote. How's that sound? Yeah? I'm going to read it off my phone. I'm not texting anybody. I'm reading. It says, no battery. Uh, that's only a joke. <laughs> you can remember that one. But they're like, what did he say? He took out his phone and he said, low battery. <laughs> he had a t-shirt that he tried to sell me afterwards. He said, low battery on it. <laughs> and I had a picture of Paris Hill. <laughs> Does anyone know what happened in 1916 in Ireland? <laughs> so you're right. The Americans are right. Well, maybe you do. Do you know? 
That's fine. <laughs> no, the pressure's off the Limerick people. <laughs> you know what happened here? Some what? Some potatoes. Probably here. <laughs> Here's my take, and you're not going to like it, but I also don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I think Limerick people checked out in 1916. Is it true? No one knows. <laughs> uh, but what you did do, Limerick was like a Soviet city for a while, wasn't it? Yeah. That was cool, why'd you stop doing that? <laughs> Imagine if you guys owned Superman. <laughs> I can hear you all salivating. <laughs> this is called An Oral History by Creation of 1916. And it's fake. It's a TV show. So don't come up to me at the end and be like, oh, I know it was about 1916, none of that happened. You know, Sabrina's not real, and apparently all of that. <laughs> I'm going to read it out. I'm going to set up each scene, and I'm going to act it out. I'm only going to read one scene. The whole TV show takes place in the grounds of an old haunted mansion. That's run by a wizard. <laughs> the old mansion is run by an old man, and sometimes when he tries to sleep, his bones grow. And that's because there's ghosts in them. <laughs> the old man is played by Eamon de Valera, <laughs> 1970 to 1975. There are two main characters, 1920s Michael Collins, and Eamon de Valera, 1922 to 1933. Collins is played by a young man with brown glasses and black hair. Eamon de Valera is played by a snake. <laughs> the plot of the film is long and winding. Collins has recently become unemployed. He used to be a student at the old haunted castle under the tutelage of Eamon de Valera. But he graduated a long time ago, in 2013. <laughs> he currently lives in his home in Swords with his wife Maud Gone, a fascist. <laughs> Collins, who is played by a young boy with black hair and a scar, <laughs> has fallen into an introspective slump, much to the chagrin <laughs> of Maud Gone, a fascist. <laughs> the two live in a hyperdance cottage in the not too distant future. Their every whim serviced by robot slaves just on the brink of artificial intelligence. <laughs> Meanwhile, Collins' best friend, William Butler Yates, is living with a newlywed couple. Collins is now completely retired to the attic, his every carnal desire serviced by the holodeck. Yates and Collins have become increasingly close. A romantic connection is formed. So here's the scene. <laughs> Yates and God are in the kitchen. Yates, do you love me? Gone, I don't know. <laughs> Yates, moves in to kiss. Gone, don't. <laughs> the robots are watching. <laughs> Yates, the robots, they don't have artificial intelligence. Gone, I suppose you're right. And I suppose they never will. <laughs> and out of the background is a robot, and there's a mirror. And the robot touches the mirror, and a tear. <laughs> <laughs> the trip continues for several weeks until they break up. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Give it a good